Every morning is a new blessing, a second chance that life gives you because you are so worth it. A pleasant morning to everyone gathered here. Today, we are here with another informative student webinar session. Webinars gives us the opportunity to teach our leads and help them understand why a product is valuable in the first place. A good teacher know how to bring the best in students. They are like a compass that activates the magnets of curiosity, knowledge and wisdom in the pupils. I take the pleasure to welcome our faculty coordinators, Mr. Sampath Kumar sir, Ms. Gayatri ma'am, Ms. Niranjani ma'am, Ms. Saranya ma'am, Dr. Shanti ma'am and Ms. Pongudi ma'am who keeps encouraging and supporting us in all aspects for this great event to happen. Now, I request Mr. Sampath Kumar sir, Assistant Professor, Department of Thank you. Good morning to each one of you present today. Uh, first of all, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, each one of you for joining this webinar. And I feel great uh, proud to say that this webinar series has been organized by uh, Department of Computer Science and Engineering for the third time and has chronicled a huge success each time. The department organizes such webinar to enlighten the young minds and promote the participation of students at all levels. I would also like to offer my uh, regards to all the students who made this webinar functional in such a hot time. Last week, the webinar was on Ocean Control System using GPA, which introduced source code management and revision control system and was graced with positive feedback from the participants. The topic of discussion for today's webinar is machine learning. Machine learning is a type of artificial intelligence that allows software application to become more accurate at predicting outcomes without being explicitly programmed to do so. Machine learning algorithms use historical data as input to predict new output values. Machine learning is important because it gives the enterprise a view of trends in customers' behavior and business operational patterns, as well as support the development of new products. Many of today's leading companies such as Facebook, Google, and Amazon makes machine learning a central part of their operations. Machine learning has become a significant competitive differentiator for many companies. With all those words, I am extremely delighted to pronounce the speakers for the today who is none other than Adishwara and Gurunesh from Third Year Computer Science and Engineering. We also welcome all the faculty members, students and part takers who have joined us today. I guarantee that the webinar will be productive and worth of your precious time. Thank you. Over to Nidita. Thank you, sir. Now, let us hear more about machine learning from our student speakers. I welcome Mr. Bhuvanesh and Mr. Radhishwara of 3rd CAC. They have developed many mini projects on SMS spam detection and hotel management system. They both earned many online course certificates in Python, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and data science. They have completed their internships based on machine learning. Now, I hand over the session to Mr. Bhuvanesh and Mr. Radishwara. Oh. Yes, uh, thank you, Sambhu sir. Thank you, Nikita. So, a great good morning to everyone uh, present in this webinar. So, this is a great opportunity and this is a great platform to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Bhuvanesh and I am currently doing Computer Science Engineering in Sri Ishwar College of Engineering. And uh, I'm very happy to do such a wonderful webinar on this uh, machine learning technology, one of the grooming technologies. Uh, you must have heard this uh, word machine learning more frequently, machine learning or artificial intelligence or data science. So these are most emerging technologies nowadays, in, especially in the field of uh, computer science and software industries. So from this webinar, I am sure that you will learn uh, something about machine learning and you learn more basic about uh, machine learning and its impact in the future. So before getting started, I would like to uh, tell you, I would like to get to know why 
we are going into machine learning technology. So why, what is the reason behind it? So if you take uh, in this world, everything is based on, is happening for a reason. So for example, uh, if we eat daily because we are feeling hung hungry every day or we sleep every day because we are feeling sleepy. So everything is for a reason and we are learning this machine learning technologies especially for a great impact in the future. So that's what we are reasoning. So let me open a, let me demonstrate to you. Too. So as you can, I am going to split the world into two halves. That is, one is past and future. If you take the past, uh, many studies say that the earth is of about uh, 4.56 billion years. So as being such a huge number, initially the, the earth would have been uh, simply a piece of mud. So with all those uh, magmas and uh, rocks and uh, toxic water. So this toxic water cannot be used for giving life. So later the toxicity of the water reduced and gave birth to a cell. So a cell is nothing but the smallest entity of uh, any living being or any living organism in this world. So from cells plants got evolved and from plants animals began to evolve. So these animals developed their brain power in which in turn produced which is nothing but human being. So a human being got uh, produced from a most brain de developed animal species and later on the humans developed and multiplied into many numbers and occupied many regions of the world and formed a human civilization. There are many societies, many regions in the world, many cultures. So as of now we are in 2021, the present state. But if you take the other side future, I am going to say this is completely going to be taken up by machines. Uh, machines going to rule this uh, future of our earth. So this is because the machines are uh, created to do some work for our human beings. So the humans uh, that performs or the task which humans cannot perform is being given to the machine so that it, so it makes us our work more efficient and uh, easy. So if you take an example, uh, if you take a fan, a fan circulates the air inside a room. So a human being cannot uh, circulate the air inside a room. So that's why you uh, developed a machine called fan to do such things. So likewise, we can say many other examples for a washing machine or air conditioner, television, mobile phones, laptop, etc. There are n number of machines nowadays. See, this all uh, is based on some machine learning. So the machine have uh, uh, learned something to do uh, certain tasks. So we are making the machines do work. So again, you must have heard about uh, self-driving cars, but it is not fully developed yet. But uh, if that happens, that would be a great one of the greatest achievement in mankind because uh, uh, making a car, making a machine drive a car is uh, really a challenging task because a machine should uh, think uh, equally to a human being and do its uh, turns and moves or accelerate the car. So it is really a tough job. But uh, uh, you can't say this self-driving car is uh, one of the most uh, advanced machine because uh, it can't do that it can only drive a car it can do nothing other than so an advanced machine should do any task given to it so for here we'll take an example uh, uh, we can take uh, what is a human a human robot humanoid robot you must have seen this in movies so humanoid robots can uh, dance can sing or they, they can fight they can cook and they can perform uh, actions which humans can do and they can perform actions which humans cannot do so everything uh, can be inbuilt to a human robot so we can say uh, but it may take for us to create this uh, human robot it may take about uh, uh, several thousand years to create such a human robot it is not easy to create but it has the ability to do uh, extraordinary things so being uh, created this robot, this in turn has the ability to create another robot. So uh, it can create another human robot itself without the help of human beings. Uh, it can create a, a, it, its own robot. 
so it keeps on multiplying and I, again it forms a group of robots and the world will be filled with uh, machines and robots in the future so after this uh, it explores the earth or uh, the mysteries revolving around the earth and it uh, comes with a solution and predictions so after uh, uh, exploring the earth the next step is to go into space definitely space is something a uh, vast thing a huge thing it should be explored or uh, discovered so for example we have to discover that there are many such planets uh, there are mars jupiter so etc so when a human robot goes to discover a planet so we'll say a uh, uh, jupiter planet so, so when it reaches a planet it discovers it uh, in the planet what are the uh, ways which can be survive in this planet or likewise so which in turn he can produce another robot for itself there itself because it has the ability to do, to do such things it has most uh, advanced uh, machine so it can perform any task so later on it keeps multiplying and it essentially eventually forms a planet of uh, robots this planet will be fully equipped with robots and machines so with this single step with this uh, single technology artificial intelligence and machine learning we can create a such a huge impact in our evolution not only in uh, planet earth it can be of uh, any other in the entire universe it, which it, so from here it can go to another planet also it may be mars or jupiter so venus so it can go to any number of planets and explore itself so with this single step we can perform uh, miracles in the future so that is what the major impact or the major reason why this technology is being grooming nowadays or uh, that this machine learning so even people are adapting and creating to solve or uh, 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 overcoming the obstacles faced in machine learning to solve such techniques so with that being said now we'll jump into the topic machine learning so let me share my screen so is my screen visible sir Yes, but we should use this one. Yes, I think. So, like I said earlier, machine learning is uh, something that machine learns something. So, consider machine as a student and human beings as a teacher. So, as the as we are a teacher, we have to teach those machines to to perform some tasks. So, that is the main. Uh, in a motto of this uh, machine learning technologies so it this uh, lump something may be of uh, any type it may be of an image or uh, you can say it may be an image or it may be audio file or video etc so it may be anything uh, it may be even a uh, algorithm based on a simple addition of two numbers it may be anything so based on this data the machine learns something and produces a model so a model is nothing but a trained machine so whatever we uh, give this uh, model this machine per gives us the desired output which we are seeking it so this is what uh, the basic uh, uh, the term of uh, machine learning so next we will see what is the purpose of machine learning so uh, like i said so we are giving input data to the machine and the machine analyzes and find patterns so this is completely based on certain algorithms or uh, some mathematical calculations so with that this machine predicts some uh, output so it finds patterns and analyzes the data and produces a output so, so based on the output we can use it in our day to day life so it, you can see the applications of machine learning are vast nowadays it, Uh, even in banking sector or e-commerce or in advertisement, if, if you come across the advertisement more frequently uh, in the website, whatever you visit, so it's uh, based on this uh, machine learning uh, algorithms. So, for example, YouTube recommendation is also based on this machine learning uh, algorithm. So, this is what uh, process of machine learning, and based on the output, we can perform our desired uh, task 
or we can use it in day, day to day life. So next we will see some of the types in machine learning. Basically there are three types in machine learning. One is supervised learning, the second is unsupervised learning and the third is reinforcement learning. So now we will see it uh, one by one. So when you take uh, supervised learning, so this completely works with uh, labeled data. So as you can see here, there are a group of images, a tomato images. So we are giving this uh, images to the machine and telling the machine that whenever an uh, image like this comes, you must give us the input as tomato. So this is what uh, we are supervising the machine. That's what the name suggests. You are supervising the machine to give us the desired output. So again, whenever you give, uh, after the telling the machine and it builds a model, whenever hereafter you give an uh, image to a tomato, it gives us a correct output. So this is what the process of a machine learning algorithm involves. But in, in case if you take of uh, unsupervised learning, it is completely based on uh, unlabeled data. So here we are giving only one form of data. Let me say it is an image of a tomato or we can give a audio files or give a video files, but only it cannot be very in different data types. It can be of only one data type. So, but we are giving here random data and we are not labeling it. So we are not telling the machine that this is a cat or a dog. We are just giving the data to the machine. So, but the machine with its algorithm classifies this uh, data or clusters or groups this data based on their similarities and uh, characteristics. So it's clusters and groups and gives us the output in the desired format. So this is uh, the process involved in unsupervised and the difference between these are the, this is the difference between the unsupervised and uh, supervised machine learning. But uh, if you take the third one, reinforcement, uh, this is completely, uh, what to say, it is hit and train method. So the machine uh, learns, learns itself from the mistakes. So first we are giving an input to the machine and the machine uh, gives us the output. So as you can see, it uh, says that this is a mango. So after this, we have to give some feedback or we have to rectify the mistake of the machine, uh, telling that based on some uh, steps and algorithm. So after rectifying the mistakes, the machine knows those mistakes. And hereafter, if you give a uh, same image again, it won't do the it won't do the mistake again, and give, it gives the correct result hereafter. So this is uh, based on the reinforcement uh, learning. So it rectifies, it uh, gives us the output, and it makes mistakes, and it learns from the mistakes, and it rectifies its mistakes, and uh, one by one. So this is uh, the cause of uh, reinforcement learning. And uh, if you have come across the chess game in uh, mobile phones or online chess games in laptops, so this is completely works with uh, reinforcement learning. So, if you are playing against a computer, uh, we say that if your computer moves a coin and you hit it, computer moves a coin here, and if you hit it, the machine thinks that it has it has done a wrong move or it has done that is not uh, suitable for its game. So, it learns from this mistake, and hereafter, whenever you play a game the next time, it won't do the same mistake again. So it rectifies a mistake and it tries to overcome one by one. So likewise, it uh, it plays uh, for each and every coin, it plays and moves it accordingly and it uh, gains from these mistakes and produces a desired output. So uh, this is what uh, basic of uh, machine learning and what is machine learning uh, involves in this technology. So this uh, patterns and analyzing the data is based on algorithms. So, uh, now I hand over the session to Adishwara and he will say about uh, how this uh, algorithms and uh, certain, certain calculations, how this machine predicts this output uh, based on this algorithm. So, uh, once again, thank for giving this opportunity and I hope uh, you learned something uh, from this webinar and uh, learned uh, some basic knowledge about machine learning. So, once again, thank you so much. And Adishwara, what do you?
thank you bonus and so as my friend bonus had said uh, he told about supervised learning and unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning reinforcement learning right so we will see a classifier in machine learning so this is the basic classifier let us share my screen is my screen visible Yes, sir. The screen is visible. Thank you, sir. So, as my friend Bonesh had said, uh, we will first learn what is the classifier, and then we will look at some codes for better understanding. So, so we are going to look at a classifier known as naive base classifier. So, the word naive base may be new to many people here. So, we will look at what is naive base. So, in the word naive base, the word base stands for a mathematical theorem that states that probability of a given b is equal to probability of b by a into probability of a divided by probability of b so this theorem is known as base theorem so that's why it's called as naive base and the adjective naive has been attributed here not because these algorithms are limited or less efficient but because of a fundamental assumption about the causal factors that we will discuss later and how to rectify them there's a way to rectify them also Um, and actually, naive base is a family of powerful and easy to train classifier, which determine the probability of an outcome given a set of conditions using the base theorem. And naive base has been classified into three types. So let's see what are they. And they are Gaussian naive base, Bernoulli's naive base, and multinomial naive base. So Gaussian naive base depends on Gaussian distribution, and Bernoulli's naive base depends upon Bernoulli's distribution, and multinomial naive base depends upon multinomial distribution. So, actually, naive base is uh, used for text classification uh, in medical field. It's used for heart disease prediction, cancer prediction, etc. And in the field of text classification, it's mainly used for spam detection and uh, sentimental analysis. So, spam detection is nothing but uh, naive base is actually present in every single Gmail or Yahoo mails or um, hot mails, any mails that we guys use. And naive base is a classifier that classifies the incoming Uh, emails to spam folder, promotions folder, junk folder, and etc. So uh, now we know what naive base is. Let's look at a multinomial naive base. Multinomial naive base is actually the best among three of the naive base for text classification, as it work on vector classifications. And when we look at this example, you will understand it more clearly. So let's take an example here. Let's say that we have twelve incoming total messages. And in that world, we are going to classify eight as normal message and four as spam messages. So, uh, what multinomial naive base does is it will create a bag of words. Uh, the words are taken from both normal uh, spam messages and normal messages, and it will create a bag of words. And then it will check the probability of a single word in spam message and non-spam message, and it will compare the probability which has the higher probability to return that value, whether it's a spam or not spam. We will understand it more clearly once we have gone through this example. So we are going to use four words here. So it's lunch, beer, friend, and money. And after collecting these values, it's going to create a histogram. Uh, just to note that these values are not actual values. Uh, here, lunch three. It doesn't mean that only three times lunch has occurred in a not spam message. It's it's just the likelihood of this word. It's like how often lunch occurs in not spam message. So. It will create a histogram of these words, histogram using these words, and it will do the same for spam also. And then we have to find the probability of a single word in not spam and the probability of single word in spam message. So in order to do that, for example, we are going to find the probability of dear here. So to find the probability of dear, we have to uh, divide the total count by dear's original value. So dear's own value is eight, and the total count will be. Three plus eight plus five plus one that will be equal to seventeen. So when we divide eight by seventeen, we'll get zero point four seven. And we are going to do for do the same for the rest and obtain the probability of lunch, friend, and money. So three by seventeen will be zero point one eight, and five by seventeen will be zero point two nine, and one by seventeen will be zero point zero six. And we are going to repeat the same for spam. When we come to spam, the values are less actually. So Four plus one plus zero plus two that will be seven, and we are going to divide the four by seven. 
So it will be 4 by 7, 0 0.57 and when we repeat the same, we will get the probability of dual lens and friend in spam. So now we have calculated the probabilities, it will store the values of uh, every single word in a separate place and then it will look at the incoming message. Let's say that we have an incoming message that says dear friend here. So when it sees this dear friend, it will automatically create two values. So probability of normal message and probability of spam message. Since we are doing it here manually, we are going to calculate P of N and P of S. Uh, when we will be looking at the code, it will be uh, taken from the training data set that we will see later. And when you look here, uh, this 8 by 12 is nothing but we have total of 12 incoming messages and out of the 12 incoming messages, 8 are spam messages, 8 are normal messages. So we are going to divide 8 by 12, that will be 0 0.67. And then what it will do is, it will multiply the value of every single word in the incoming message with, uh, with the probability of normal message. So the probability of dear in normal messages is 0 0.47 and 0 0.47 and the probability of friend in normal messages is 0 0.29. So 0 0.29 and when we multiply every single value, we get 0 0.09 as our output and we have to do the same for probability of spam. Here it's 4 by 12 because we have got only 4 incoming spam messages and we got total of 12 messages. So it will be 0 0.33 and probability of spam will be 0 0.33 into 0 0.29 into 0 0.14. So this 0 0.29 is nothing but the probability of dear in spam messages and probability of 1.4 is probability of friend in spam messages. So we will obtain the value 0 0.1, 0 0.01 and, and then it will compare these both values and from comparison we can clearly see that 0 0.09 is greater and it will return this as normal message. So we have talked about the attribute naive, right? So uh, I told about some basic miscalculations done on the common factors. So let's take a look, uh, example for that. So don't mind the calculations, just uh, look at the message here. So it says lunch money money. And as you know, it doesn't mean anything and this is just a spam message. Uh, we have to classify this as a spam message. But when we, when we, we take a look at our data, the data says that lunch has a value of zero in spam. So zero into anything will be zero, right? So 0 into 0 0.57 into 0 0.57 will be 0, while we have an actual value for lunch here, here we will get some minor value, which will be definitely greater than 0. So this message will be classified as a not spam. So this is the small mistake that naive base does. So in order to rectify this, we are going to add one, since there is a, since there is a 0 value here, we are going to add 1 to the histograms. So this 8 will become 9 and this 5 will become 6 and this 3 will become 4 and this 1 will become 2. So here the values will be changed and we have to do the same for here. So 4 will become 5 and 1 will become 2 and 2, 0 will become 1 and 2 will become 3. So we are doing this only because we have encoded that the value it has 0 in it. If, uh, for example, we didn't change any values in the histogram here because we, are, we don't have any values that uh, has a 0 in it. Since we have encountered a 0, we are going to change the values and then we have to find the probability for the new changed values. So here we have found that. So probability of dia will be, the previous value of dia was 8 and we have changed it to 9. And since we are adding 1 to each value here, we have to increment the denominator by 4. So 17 plus 4. If you have 5 values, we will increment the denominator by 5. So here it will be 9 by 21, which is equal to 0 0.43 and 4 by 21 which is equal to 0 0.19 and 6 by 21 which is equal to 0 0.29 and 2 by 21 which is equal to 0 0.10 and we are going to change the values of spam also so the previous value of dia would be 2 and it has changed to 3 so 3 by 11 is equal to 0 0.27 and 2 by 11 is equal to 0 0.09 and 2 by 11 is equal to actually it's 1 I changed as 2 sorry Sorry guys, it's actually 1. So 1 will be 0 0.18 and 5 will be uh, 0 0.45. It's actually 1, not 2. So as you can see here, we are going to now do the same and the probability of normal message and spam message only change. 
because the value is for we, we didn't change the value of incoming and uh, spam or not spam messages we change only the value for histogram values so the p of n and p of s won't change so it will be 0 0.67 and 0 0.33 and then we are going to multiply 0 0.67 into 0 0.19 into 0 0.10 into 0 0.10 so it will be 0 0.001 and since you have changed the values the lunch will have an actual value now so it will be 0 0.33 into 0 0.9 into 0 0.45 into 0 0.45 that will be 0 0.0122 so here we can clearly see that uh, p of s is greater than p of n and this value will be written as spam message now for a clear understanding it will be good if you look at some codes so, one so we'll be looking at this code later we'll just learn how to clean a data set now So as again, as you guys can see here, we are going to use uh, MLTK. MLTK is nothing but natural language toolkit, and we are going to import uh, the function tokenize and stop code. And we need to tokenize each uh, for a text in, in our data set so that it will be easier for the multinomial language classifier to work on it. And you guys will have a doubt once we tokenize it. I will say what that is. We have downloaded the required packages and increase the here we are just taking a string and not the whole data set because it will be uh, difficult to understand by if you use a whole data set. So I just use a simple string. And then as you can see here, after tokenization, the whole string has been splitted splitted into single uh, single words in a list. So you guys will start to wonder this is the same thing as uh, dot split in Python. But the difference between dot split and word tokenize is if you use dot split, the special characters won't be splitted. As you can see here, the, say, the exclamation mark is attached to studying and the full stops are attached to engineering. But as you can see here, the full stop has its own uh, one value and the engineering has its own value. So this is the difference between word tokenization and splitting. And then we are going to import stop words. So stop words are nothing but uh, the words that are used to join two words in a sentence or the words that don't have any meaning by itself so we are going to and we have to specify the language in which we are going to import the stop words we are going to import english stop words here since our data is in english and these are the stop words that are in english so after importing the stop words we are going to uh, remove the so i told about cleaning a data set right so cleaning a data set means we have to remove the punctuation stop words and Make sure that the multinomial libraries has a very uh, easy work to do and it doesn't have to encounter the stop words or special characters. So in order to create a, create a clean data set, we have to remove the punctuations and we are going to do that here. And string is actually a very powerful module compared to C in Python. Uh, in C, if you have to remove in C, if you have to remove punctuations, you have to write lines of code for like 15 to 20 lines minimum and here it's just two lines in Python. String is so powerful in Python that it has its own module and so we are going to remove the punctuations. Yeah, after removing the punctuations, as you guys can see, really difficult to read this whole data set. So we are going to join that and after joining, you can see the difference here. Exclamation mark and the full stops are all gone, and our data set is ready to prepare for another step of cleaning. So, we have to, we are still not remove the stop words yet. And before removing the stop words, we are going to vectorize the data. So, vectorization is nothing but the compiler can't read the whole string and work on it, the compiler has to work on zeros and ones. So, we are going to convert the string to zeros and ones here. So, before uh, before tracing a string, it is going to return as a dictionary with values and keys. So here, uh, this uh, 4 means I am and this 9 means studying and you will understand this once we run the next time. So this is how we have traced our data and this is how the vectorized data looks like. So here 0, 0 means this, uh, let's say 0 stands for a single row. So only a single row is there so it will always single column. And always it will always be 0 and this 0 stands for the word college 
and it says that in zeroth column the zeroth word has occurred only one time so the word college has occurred only one time in this whole sentence and i i want to be uh, added at two in here so that will be clear for you so as you guys can see here zero five means two and when we say zero five we actually say that the word in has occurred two times in the zeroth column so that's what this means and after replacing the data we are going to clean it so this is our uh, final data that the multinomial naive base will work on and this what our input data was so as you guys can see it has a huge difference right from what we actually inputted and what we have got after cleaning the data set i mean cleaning this thing so this is how we clean a data set this is similar to how we clean a data set except that we will be using regular expressions for removing the punctuations So we'll take a closer look at the data set. So now we are going to. So this is uh, a SMS spam detection project that we did on our second year, and it's actually quite easy to create. And I, I'm running this in Jupyter Notebook because it will be easier for you guys to understand. So first we are going to import the required libraries, and first we are going to import NumPy as we are going to work on arrays here. And we are going to use pandas to work on our data set and read the data set. And then there will be a short uh, visualization of our data set. So we are going to use matplotlib and cbom. And as we saw earlier, NLTK is used for short words and Porter schema. This Porter schema means it's used for Porter schema does a stemming of words that's used for text normalization. Uh, text normalization is used in the fields of natural language processing that are used for it's easy to classify the text. So we are going to use Porter schema for easy classification of text, and we are going to read to clean the data set here actually to remove punctuation marks and that read is nothing but regular expressions, and we are going to use sklearn. So this is the most important thing here. It contains the multinomial naive base algorithm, and the major advantage over here is multinomial naive base algorithm is a most algorithms are pre-written in machine learning. So we have to just import the data set, import the Algorithm, and then we have to fit the data set into the algorithm and run it. That's it. So, and then we are going to check how much accurately we can predict the future results. So, as my friend Bhuvan has said, that we can predict the future from the past. So, we are going to use that. First, we are going to read the data set here. Sorry, I have to run this. So, this is how our data set looks like. It has only two columns, label and message, and there will be many rows here. So we'll check the shape of our data set. So it has 5,572 rows and two columns in it. And then we are going to drop the uh, rows which uh, which look similar similar in our data set, so that it will be easy to classify. I mean, easy to clean our data set. And after dropping the duplicate, we are going to have 5,169. Five thousand hundred and sixty-nine uh, rows and two columns in it, and we are going to check what the two co uh, column label has in it. So it has two values actually: ham and spam. Ham is nothing but the message which are classified as not spam message. Normal messages are referred to as ham here, and so actually uh, we are going to visualize the data. So it will be easy if we just see. The data in our graph, rather than reading the shapes, even though it won't, it can be made accurate. I have just made it since we have uh, made it approximate since we have we know the accurate values here. So as you can see here, ham has a value of approximately four thousand five hundred, and spam has a value of approximately five hundred. And here even its ham's value is four thousand five hundred and sixteen, and we have over six hundred and fifty three spam messages. So uh, this is this is uh, data visualization for your knowledge. Mm. We are going to clean the data set. So cleaning the data set is what we saw earlier. It will take some time to run. And we are going to we are not importing the string module here because we are we are going to use the regular expression substitution here. We are going to check whether the text messages are from the range A to Z. 
and if they are not in the range a to z we are going to replace them with the we are going to replace them with a uh, space value and then we are going to uh, read it so it has run like this it's still running and after getting after uh, removing the punctuation we are going to change the message to lower we are changing it to lower because the stopwatch will be in lower case as we saw it in the earlier example so we are going to convert the message to lower case and remove the stopwatch also so this is how the data sets look it looks like after cleaning uh, for an example let's take a look here as you can see here in the first line the, uh, the word there is present here but after cleaning the word there is not absent uh, present here actually absent here so we actually remove all the stop words and punctuation marks from here and then this is the bag of words that we, are, that we saw in the pp so we are going to create a bag of words and we are actually creating a bag of words and vectorizing we are doing both in single thing and after vectorization we will have only zeros and ones here and we can only see zeros here because uh, it will take a very long time to show the whole array so i am just uh, showing the part of an array which contains only zeros and yeah. so again we said uh, we talked about some thing known as uh, attribute naive right so some basic miscalculations so the basic mis miscalculation al can also be the uh, after cleaning the data set some word may be actually cut into half and it won't have a whole meaning so we are going to get the root words uh, root words means for example uh, this acc will be uh, means accept like that so accept will be cut into acc so we are going to get the feature names and then we are going to create a variable y we are creating a variable y because in order to split the data into two halves that's test train split uh, we need two data since we have only we have created only one variable here x we need another variable for better working of multinomial naive so we are going to create an another variable y which is dependent on x so y will also look like x and we are going to split the data into test train split and test train split is nothing but we are going to divide the base data into 80% test 80% train split and 20% training data and from that 80% of training data we can actually predict the outcome of 20% uh, test data it's not uh, compulsory that we have to split the data into 80, 80 is to 20 ratio you can also uh, split it like 50 to 50 is to 50 ratio but the basic rule is that we will be dividing 80 to 20 so we are going to split the data and 4153 is what 80% uh, of our base data and this 2500 is nothing but the feature value that we have given here so this is how our x train shape looks like and it will also be a vectorized array since um, multinomial naive can work on arrays better and yeah so this is what uh, this is where we start the use of naive base classifier and we are going to use multinomial naive base and multinomial naive base has only one parameter in it that's known as alpha alpha is nothing but uh, alpha controls the whole module of multinomial naive base and determines how fast it should predict or how better it will predict it in order to alpha value can range from 0 0.1 to 1.0 so in order to find the best alpha value we are going to set the best accuracy score from 0, 0.0 and run it till 100 percentage and we are going to set the alpha value as 0, 0.0 and we are going to run it till 1.0 so we are going to start at 0, 0.0 that's base alpha value not the base accuracy so we are going to start from this alpha value and run it till 1.0 and i have given here 1.1 because it will take till only 1.0 and we are going to increment each value by 0 0.1 so we'll increment like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, etc. And then we are going to find the best alpha value for our training data set. Uh, the P of n and P of n is, I hope you guys remember it. The P of n and P of n, as we found out, right, 8 divided by 12 and 4 divided by 12. So this is where that comes in. So we are going to create a temporary variable and 
load the multinomial naive base algorithm in it. And then we are going to fit a training data set into the multinomial naive base algorithm. And then we are going to find the best accuracy score. And this loop will run until the score is set to 100 percentage here, until it has reached 100. So, I mean, it will depend on the best. As you can see here, many ways would start wondering that it will, you said that it will run till 100, but it's only 97.97 here. So, this is the maximum value that our our training data set can have, and our training data set cannot have 100 percentage because it's not that good. So, it's 97.9 percentage, and our alpha value is 0 0.02. So, we're going to set that as our alpha value. We're going to create a variable name classifier and load the multinomial name with the alpha value as 0 0.02. And then we are going to fit the x train on y train data set here. And after fitting it, we are going to check whether our alpha value is correct or not. So, in order to check that, we are going to create a y predictable variable and assign it with x test value. And this y test will, y pred will have the, will have the values of x test. Sorry, I didn't forget to run this. This y pred will have the will predict the output of x test, and this is uh, this is actually the output of x test value. So in order to check whether we have predicted it correct or not, as you can see, uh, the accuracy score is 97.97, and which is also the accuracy score of alpha 0.297.97. So our accuracy score is correct, and alpha value is also correct. So we'll carry on with the prediction, and we are going to clean the incoming message, there we clean the data set, here we clean the data sets, here we are going to clean the incoming message, the message that uh, multinomial naive has to read. So, we are going to uh, clean the data set over here and after cleaning the data set, we are going to pass it to the temporary variable which has been assigned as uh, multinomial naive classifier and we are going to predict the value of them. So, if we run this, and here we are going to uh, store two values in results. Since here there is only two classifications, spam or not spam, we are going to store it as this is spam and this is a normal message. So, these are the two values that we are going to store, and we are going to store that in a list. And for example, say we get a message from our friend saying, Hi, how are you? So, this is a normal message. And Okay, let's say 3, 1, 3, 3, 3, 4, 3, 4. So, this is a spam. Nobody gives a free, free entry to FIFA World Cup. So, this is a spam. And hi, however, is a normal message as by our friend. This, so, this is how naive base classifier works. But it may look very simple here. But this is what is used in Google, Yahoo, everywhere. So, once you guys are good with this, you can actually uh, again, more knowledge on machine learning. This is just a basic introduction for machine learning. And I, I hope that you guys have uh, learned something from our presentation. Thank you, guys. So, dear participant, if you have any doubt, you can post it in the chat below. Okay, I'm sure you got a question. Like, uh, yes, sir. One of the participants is asking what are all the real time applications of uh, machine learning? Of machine learning? So, yes, sir. It's, a, it's audible, sir. So, machine learning is used almost everywhere in your day to day life. If you look at your phone, you see, uh, you will be using social media, right? So, in YouTube, the videos that you, get, you are getting recommended is based on machine learning. Or if you look at Facebook, there are feeds that you are reading is based on machine learning. I am not audible, sir. You are audible, sir. Okay. So, like it, everything is based on machine learning these days. Uh, your whole phone is based on machine learning. And the best example is the Gmails and YouTube. So, in Gmail, as I said, the email classification is based on machine learning. And the YouTube videos recommendation is also based on machine learning. Sri Lakshmi, uh, sir. Yeah, please go ahead, uh, Bonish. Sir, uh, 
Sri Lakshmi, uh, AI is uh, machine learning is nothing but a branch of artificial intelligence. So, uh, if you take uh, intelligence, artificial intelligence is nothing but uh, feeding uh, intelligence to the machine. So, artificially. So, it is not a human uh, inbuilt or natural ability. So, we are inbuilting it. So, uh, this machine learning is comes under uh, artificial intelligence only. It is a branch of it. So, not only artificial intelligence, uh, deep learning and neural networks, and even data science, a part of data science is involved in uh, uh, artificial intelligence. So, this all uh, is in a bag of uh, called artificial intelligence. I hope there is no other question from uh, participants. Okay. Thank you, participants, for uh, joining with us. Let us move to the next session, which is uh, virtual certificate distribution session. I thank. Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, Adishwara and Bhuvanesh uh, for uh, delivering a wonderful uh, webinar. And, uh, and I like to thank uh, Nikita for uh, coordinating us uh, to conduct this webinar. Thank you, Nikita. Thank you, Bhuvanesh and uh, Adishwara. And. Uh, Next week, we have an another wonderful uh, webinar on digital marketing. The session will be conducted by uh, Mr. Santosh from uh, Thurnia Computer Science and Engineering. I welcome all the participants to join with us uh, again on next week. Uh, thank you, participants. Thank you. Have a nice day. Please stay home and stay safe. once again for uh, joining with us. We will meet you again on, uh, next week in another wonderful session. Please stay home and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, sir.